This lecture is going to be about propagating uncertainty in physics problems. This is assuming that you already understand all the rules for propagating uncertainty in addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and powers and roots, and that you understand absolute, fractional, and percent uncertainty. If you're confused about any of those, I've left links to my lectures on each in the description to this video. Physics problems give you values of variables and equations that connect them. Your job is to follow the correct steps to propagate uncertainty to find the uncertainty of the answer. So I'll give you these four examples of propagating uncertainty in more complex physics problems where you have to combine the rules that you know to find the answer. These are the rules for propagating uncertainty for addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, and powers and roots. So I'll just apply them as we go through each example. In example one, the absolute uncertainty of the radius of a 2D plate is delta B. What is the fractional uncertainty of the area of the plate? As usual, the best way to do a physics problem is to just start by writing down everything that you know. I know that the area of a 2D plate is equal to pi r squared, and I know that the absolute uncertainty of r is equal to delta B. That's just a definition that the problem gives me. This means that the fractional uncertainty of r is going to be equal to delta b over b. That's just the way that we express fractional uncertainty as a variable. So we know that the radius has a relative or fractional uncertainty of delta b over b. And that means that the radius squared has a relative uncertainty of 2 times delta b over b, because the rule for raising a number to a power is you multiply the fractional uncertainty by the power to get the new uncertainty. So here the power is 2, so we multiply the fraction by 2. And pi has no uncertainty because it's an exact number. And the rule for multiplying numbers says to add the relative uncertainties of each number. So if I multiply pi times r squared, I'm adding the zero fractional uncertainty of pi to the two delta b over b fractional uncertainty of r squared. So that means the fractional uncertainty of the area of the plate is equal to two times delta b over b. That's how you would solve that problem. In number two, the length of each side of a cube is three meters plus or minus 4%. The mass of the cube is five kilograms plus or minus 8%. What is the uncertainty of the density of the cube? So again, I'm gonna start by writing down everything I know. I know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. And the percent uncertainty of the mass is 8%. And I know that the volume is going to be the length of each side of the cube cubed raised to the power of three. So that means the percent uncertainty of the volume is gonna be that power times the relative or percent uncertainty. So that's gonna be three times the percent uncertainty, which means the volume has an uncertainty of 12%. And the rule for dividing two numbers with uncertainties says to add their percent uncertainties together. So the uncertainty of the density will be the percent uncertainty of the mass, which is eight, plus the percent uncertainty of the volume, which is 12, which is equal to 20%. So that's the percent uncertainty of the density. Number three says a sphere is inside a cube. Both the diameter of the sphere and the length of any one of the sides of the cube is 20.0 plus or minus 0.8 meters. What is the value of the ratio of the percent uncertainty of the volume of the sphere to the percent uncertainty of the volume of the cube? So we know the volume of the sphere is this, and this is the volume of the cube. I'm calling each side d because that's equal to the length of the diameter as well. I also know that the radius is one half of the diameter. So if I rewrite that volume equation, this is what I get in terms of the diameter. And I know that all these numbers here are exact numbers, so they don't affect the uncertainty because each one has an uncertainty of zero and they're being multiplied. And when you multiply numbers with uncertainty, you add their percent uncertainties. So all those numbers to the left are just contributing zero uncertainty to the final result. So the uncertainty in the sphere is equal to the uncertainty in the diameter cubed because the other numbers aren't contributing any new uncertainty, which is actually also equal to the uncertainty of the cube because the cube's equation is just equal to the diameter cubed. So it will have the same uncertainty as the sphere. And if two things are the same, the ratio between them is just one. So that's the answer to question number three. These two things have the same uncertainty. You could do a more complicated calculation with the actual numbers that were given, 20 plus or minus 0.8, but the result would be the same. The uncertainty in the sphere would equal the uncertainty in the cube. Problem number four says in the equation k equals the square root of a max over x naught, the uncertainty of a max is 20% and the uncertainty of x naught is 12%, what is the uncertainty of k? 
I'll start by finding the uncertainty in the fraction, and I know that the division rule says to add the relative uncertainties together. So here I'm adding the percent uncertainty of A max to the percent uncertainty of X naught. So that's equal to 32%. So now we need to find the uncertainty of the square root of that answer, and the root rule says to multiply the relative uncertainty by one over the root. So this is a square root, so I multiply the percent uncertainty by one half, and when I do that, I get a final answer of 16%. So if the uncertainty of A max is 20% and the uncertainty of X naught is 12%, the uncertainty of K will definitely be exactly 16% of its value. So that's how you apply those rules together in more complicated problem solving to understand the uncertainty of more complicated values in physics.